Welcome back to another video on my channel. I've posted by now a lot of videos about the new Leica M11, which you see here on display. And Leica just recently issued a new firmware for the camera, so let's quickly have a look here. It's actually here in camera information. It's firmware 1.3.00, and I already provided my review on that new firmware. But what I also said in that recent video is that I wanna see now if Leica finally implemented pixel binning in the way I would expect it. Let's get started. The Leica M11 is the first rangefinder camera which actually provides different resolutions in the RAW format. And you see this here if we go on page two of the settings and go into DNG resolution, we have large, that's the native resolution of the sensor, 60 megapixel. Then we have medium, which is 36 megapixel, and small, which is 18 megapixel. And pixel binning is a technology which comes into play in a lot of smartphones, where pixels are grouped together to achieve super pixels, and these super pixels then, of course, if they are counted in horizontal and vertical dimension, they have a much smaller resolution, in this case from 60 to 36 or from 60 to 18. But since they are grouped in a smart way and there is also some computational photography coming on top of it, these lower resolution images should actually perform better when it comes to dynamic range and noise behavior. In the manual to the new firmware 1.3.0, which I just showed you in the camera menu, Leica actually speaks about bug fixes and I promised in that video where I provided my review of the new firmware that I look into potential pixel binning again and if you see any improvement in dynamic range or noise behavior if you shoot DNG with lower resolutions. What I will add in comparison to previous videos on the Leica M11 is I will do true like for like comparisons. So scaling the higher resolution images down to the target resolution of the lower resolution DNG files. So let's see what we get in this little exercise here. I will do my testing of course in fully manual mode as you can see here. So I have access to exposure time or shutter speed as well as to ISO. The action plan for my testing is as follows. We'll significantly underexpose, overexpose, we'll go for high ISO values. We will also scale in a true like for like comparison images from higher resolution to smaller resolution and then compare in Lightroom if we see any difference between originally lower resolution shots and scaled down higher resolution shots. Let's take a test image first. I wanna shoot this with half a second exposure time and at the native ISO of 64. So let's go here. I also use the self timer. Let's take the first shot, counting down. Then we zoom in to see if this is sharp and crisp and it is indeed sharp and crisp. Let's look at the camera body here. Very nice, so that's what I want. And now we go into the testing. As we see here with the parameters I've chosen for the test image, we actually have the correct exposure. So let's now underexpose this by five full stops. And if we do that, half a second then gives one over four, one over eight, one over 16, one over 32, one over 64. So let's see what we can adjust here on shutter speed. So let's choose it and let's go down here to one over 60 is very likely the closest we get. And you see here, this is now significantly underexposed. So let's first check the resolution. We have here currently the full native resolution. So let's take the shot. Counting down again. Here is the shot, super underexposed. And now let's change the resolution and let's later compare these images in post. So we go here now and we take a shot with 36 megapixel. Same procedure, same parameters, same exposure. And let's do this also with 18 megapixel. Very good. So I think that's the first series of shots I want to consider. Now let's get back to the correct exposure. So we were here at half a second. So let's go back here. 0.5, that's good. And let's also change the resolution back to where we came from, namely to the native resolution of the sensor, 60 megapixel. Now let's go in the other direction and let's overexpose the image. And the way I'm going to do this is, I go into the status screen and uh, I will choose my exposure time and we'll go up by full three stops. So that means we go from half a second to one second, 
two seconds, four seconds. And we take now the same shot in the different resolutions. Let's quickly check where we are. So currently we are here on, let's go up to the native resolution, 60 megapixel, and let's take that shot here. Four seconds, takes a moment. All right, let's do the same now with the lower resolutions. So we go here again into DNG resolution, medium resolution, same shot, same exposure. Okay, and the last one is the small resolution. I will stop filming here and documenting my procedure because I think it is clear by now what I'm going to do. The last test I will do is going for 50,000 ISO and then of course a very fast shutter speed and doing the same exercise, shooting images with all three DNG resolutions. Let's now go into post and let's have a look at the results. I've now imported all test images into Lightroom and for the time being they all look pretty much the same, but I'm going to explain in a moment what's going on here. Let's look first of all at the first image with correct exposure, 60 megapixel. Very nice image, if you look at that, looks really good. We are at a magnification here of 100%. And this is, by the way, the Leica M Monochrome Signature by Andy Summer, which I used as a subject here for my test shooting. So quite nice. Here we have the 36 megapixel image and here the 18 megapixel image. And on the 18 megapixel image in the same way, they all look really good. So there's really nothing to complain here. Let's look at the underexposed images first. So here's the one with 60 megapixel and that was underexposed by five full stops. And you can see this easily if we go into develop and go into before and after, you see this is the original image and this is the image where I pushed up the exposure slider in Lightroom by five full stops. The same procedure which I just showed, I also did with the 36 megapixel image underexposed by five full stops, correcting by five full stops in Lightroom and I did exactly the same also with the 18 megapixel image. Now here's an image which has a label scaled to 36 megapixel and that's what I did with the original image, with the full resolution, I scaled it to 36 megapixel in Photoshop. And I did the same also towards 18 megapixel. And now I want to put them side by side so that we can compare the differences or maybe see they are exactly the same. So here's then the first comparison. On the left hand side, I have the same pixel dimension as on the right hand side. But the difference between the two images is that the left hand side was created coming from the original 60 megapixel RAW file or DNG file, correcting it in Lightroom by these five full stops, importing it into Photoshop and then scaling it down and getting the exact same pixel dimension or DPI as what I have on the right hand side, which then is the native DNG file coming out of camera but shot with 36 megapixel. I go now into these two test images with a 200% deep crop and if we look at that, these images are almost the same, but the left hand side, which is the image coming from the original 60 megapixel DNG file, actually is a bit sharper and has a bit more detail, which you can see here, for instance, in that part of the image. And there is not more noise. Let's look into the background here. Absolutely not. So on this side, if you come from under exposure and want to toggle between 60 megapixel and 36 megapixel, it's always better to go for 60 megapixel and then post-processing it down to a smaller file size and smaller resolution. And the exactly same outcome I find if I now compare on the left hand side, the original 60 megapixel file corrected by five full stops in Lightroom, then scaled down in Photoshop to exactly the same pixel dimension as the right hand side, which is the original 18 megapixel DNG coming out of camera, also corrected by five full stops. We don't see a lot of differences in these images, but what we see again is in particular here that just tiny little details are occurring better on the left hand side, which is the scaled down image, then we see them on the right hand side. And also here, if you look at the camera body here, it's just looking better on the left hand side. So again, the conclusion is even if you go for the small resolution, 18 megapixel, you're better off shooting first with 60 megapixel and then doing the post-processing and then scaling it down to a pixel dimension of 18 megapixel, which gives you desired smaller file size. Let's now look into overexposure. And here's the 60 megapixel file, looks actually good. 200% crop, fine, it replicates all the details on the camera body here. Let's also have a look here. And that came from 
three stops of overexposure, which you can see if I go to the develop section and put them side by side. On the left hand side, the originally overexposed image, on the right hand side, the corrected image. Also here, no other post-processing was going on. The only change I made was I corrected now to the left hand side, three full stops on the exposure slider and Lightroom. Let's go back to the library and let's have a comparison as we did it before. So here is the original image 60 megapixel scaled down and here is the native DNG file in the 36 megapixel version. Let's put them side by side and uh, these images look pretty much the same and let's first look into the background. Clearly we have highlight clipping going on here but all the details are nicely captured but already here again you see the left hand side is a bit more tech sharp than what you have on the right hand side and you see this also here. It's just looking sharper, better and cleaner if you come from the 60 megapixel DNG file, correct it in post, import it into Photoshop and then scale it down to exactly the same pixel dimension which is here according to Lightroom 36.5 megapixel. So the same conclusion as what we saw before on underexposure. There is also no different conclusion if we now go further down in resolution to 18.4 megapixel here, left hand side again coming from the 60 megapixel DNG in the process I described now various times. On the right hand side the native 18 megapixel DNG and these images again look almost the same but if you zoom in here by 200% you think it's even a bit more elevated that the left hand side is better than the right hand side and has more details, more clarity and again you're better off coming from a 60 megapixel DNG file than doing all the post processing and later scaling it down than starting from scratch in camera with an 18 megapixel DNG file. Here the last series of test shots I did. So this is now shot at an ISO of 50,000 so the highest ISO level we can achieve on the Leica M11 and the shutter speed is 1 divided by 2000 seconds to compensate for that and by the way in all the images you see an aperture occurring here of f16 which again is completely wrong because there are no electronic contacts between Leica M lenses and between the camera body and I was shooting all the test images at a moderate f5.6 just to let you know. And this image is actually a very astonishing result because shooting at ISO 50,000 typically produces images full of grain on any other camera except maybe the monochrome cameras from Leica but the Leica M11 masters this challenge quite nicely and for a 50,000 ISO cropping in 200%, maybe I should go now to 100% to not make it overwhelming. This is still a good result. You see a lot of details on the camera body here and if you look into the background, even the background noise is quite acceptable. So with some post-processing, I could actually use that image and if I would be in an awkward situation where I would have to bump up my ISO value, that would actually be possible with the Leica M11. So a really good result. But if I now follow the same procedure as what I did before on under and overexposure and I take the native 60 megapixel DNG file, no post-processing going on, but just scale it down in Photoshop to the same pixel dimension as what I have on the right hand side, namely the native 36 megapixel DNG file, then it becomes even more elevated that you are better off starting from scratch with 60 megapixel because if you look into certain areas here you see there is more color noise, a little more color noise on the right hand side on the native DNG file than what you have on the scaled down 60 megapixel resolution DNG file. And I think is if you scroll for a while through that image, it becomes really obvious that you're much better off starting with 60 megapixel. Replacing the 36 megapixel versions by the 18.4 megapixel versions, the same situation. And here the advantage of the left hand side, namely coming from 60 megapixel natively, is even more significant if you look into that. Details are better on the left hand side, noise is better. And uh, in particular, if we go into the background here, you immediately see that the left hand side is really better than the right hand side. So again, you're better off starting from 60 megapixel and then going down to smaller file size via post-processing and you should not go for the native DNG file with 18 megapixel. For the sake of completeness, here the original DNG files as they came out of camera. And I think the conclusion is pretty clear. Storage and memory is not really an issue today. And you also have a huge internal memory on the Leica M11. So don't go for these native DNG files with 36 or 18 megapixel, just you want to save some space. You will be much better off 
and in different shooting situations this can become even more significant to always go for the full resolution of the sensor and then scale it down later in post if you want a smaller file size or if you want a smaller resolution. Leica has done such an excellent job in designing this brand new sensor on the Leica M11. The dynamic range is so strong and the noise behavior is so good that you can safely always shoot with 60 megapixels. If you liked that video and hopefully it provided useful and valuable insights to you, then please don't forget to drop me a thumbs up as an appreciation for my work. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy. And of course, peace out.